Hey guys, um, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about a new planner that I picked up. I'm super excited about it. Um, as somebody who struggles with anxiety and struggles with time management, and not because I, you know, necessarily leave things to the last minute or that I don't have good time management skills, I'm just one of those people that unless I have a time tracker or an hourly layout or some way to identify how much time I actually have. Um, I tend to overbook and I tend to try to get way too much done in a short amount of time that is super unrealistic. Um, so today I'm going to go over the new planner that I got and um, kind of tell you what my first impressions are and how and what I think. Um, now I am a college student. I started classes on Monday. So I'm a college student. I'm married juggling a bunch of different stuff right now um so if you're wondering how used I actually how much stuff I actually have to plan there is a lot um and this week's gonna look kind of possibly empty um but it's partly because I'm still trying to figure out exactly how I want to use the planner but it's also because I'm trying to make sure that I don't over plan or I don't plan too much on a day um and I'm doing a lot of really big projects right now, so I'm trying to leave a lot of time blocked out or empty so I can do those things or move things around if I need to. So the planner that I picked up is the Passion Planner. Um, so this is the classic size. It's, I believe, eight and a half by 11, almost like a sheet of paper, printer paper. Um, so I picked this up off of Mercari. So I didn't buy this from the actual company, when 2019 comes around, I'm going to be buying one from the actual company. I um, bought this one off of Mercari because I wanted to really make sure that I was going to use it. And if I am still using it and really utilizing it well, I'm going to buy one from the company for 2019. Um, so this is the 2018-2019 classic version. They have a classic, a compact, and a pro. They have a one that runs from January to December, they have one that is undated, and they have an academic which runs from August to July. Um, so this planner comes with lots of different features and things in it to help you really focus on your goals and focus on getting things done and really making sure that you're using your time to not only get the things done you have to get done, like on your to-do list, so running errands, laundry, that kind of stuff, but it also gives you a place to really map up your map out your goals and figure out what it is that you want to do and what you want to achieve. So they have this thing called the Passion Roadmap, and it's broken down into a wish list. And so the wish list has stuff for three months, one year, three years, and a lifetime. And then you pick one thing from your three months section and you plan that out and how you're going to change that. Um, so this is your Passion Roadmap. And then this is your the one thing that you chose. Um, so you can see that I did mine in different colors for the, the times. So my three months is in gray. My one month or my one year is in purple. My lifetime is in green, and my three years is in blue. Um, so for my game changer, I chose wellness. It's something I wanted to choose something that was all encompassing, or something that I felt was all encompassing, because I didn't want to just say you know, hit the gym, or, you know, lose 30 pounds, or meditate. I wanted something that was really going to change how I felt physically and mentally, and then kind of incorporated all those different aspects into one umbrella. Um, so, like, so the way that I broke down my wellness and how I felt that I would best accomplish this goal in three months was to focus on my goals for the wellness and make sure that I was hitting them every single day, even if it was just to hit the gym for 20 minutes, because that's all I could do. I wanted to make sure that I focused on those goals and really focused in on this and what it was that I wanted. Um, and then, you know, I said, like, drinking lots of water, making sure that I do self-care, um, you know, taking time to journal, taking time to take baths, taking my medications, taking my vitamins, you know, that kind of thing. Losing and getting rid of toxic people and toxic relationships in my life, um, you know, learning to say no to things and to people. You know, I don't have to do everything all the time. And I'm one of those people that is guilty of 
saying yes, 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 things I feel bad for saying ain't no, but then when it comes to actually doing it, I end up feeling like I have to cancel or that I should cancel or that I can't cancel because in the first, because I didn't want to do it in the first place, but then I said yes, so now I feel like I'm obligated and feel like I have no way out in that is a situation that I'm really tired of being in because I feel like I have to say yes, even though I can say no. Um, you know, hitting the gym four days a week, making sure that I put time and effort and improve the good relationships that I do have with people and my family and those types of things. Making sure that I meditate, working on changing my mindset so I have a positive mindset towards things. So I look at the world in a different view so I'm able to really visualize what it is that I want. Um, and then working on the fake 98. So what the fake 98 is is something that I came up with where... I've got 99 problems, but 98 of them are fake and made up in my head. Like, they're things that either A, they would happen, but it's like a one in a million chance, or B, they're things that wouldn't happen ever at all. Um, and so it's just extra worrying and much extra anxiety that I'm trying to deal with. Um, so working on the fake Fort 90 and how to deal with that, how to deal with that anxiety and how to deal with those situations of where I have all these things in my head and I think that they're real issues but they're not. Um, so then you have a monthly setup and a weekly setup. So your monthly setup, I'll show you a blank one. So your monthly setup oops, looks like this. Sorry if you keep hearing buttons. Um, I keep, I'm laying this on my computer so as I'm videoing. So it keeps hitting buttons. So your monthly setup has all these spaces. So you have your so you have your 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 dated boxes like a normal calendar would. But then on the side you have this month's focus, where you have a personal and a work column. You have people to see in this box, places to go in this box, and the not to do list in this box. And down here you have personal projects and work projects. So you've got due dates, so you've got top priority projects, and then on the bottom it's just regular projects. So then over here is what they have, so it's a break it down. Create a mind map of this month's game changer. So this is where you put your little, your mini mind map for what you're trying to accomplish for that goal. Or your goals, if you chose, if you want to work on them more than one at once. Um, so this is an empty weekly. So you have all seven days. Now these planners either come in a Monday start or a Sunday start. And that also goes for your monthly as well. So this planner is a Sunday start. So you have your date, your day, what day it is, or, you know. So then it has a little box for today's focus. And then it has a timed column that goes from 6 a.m. to 10.30 at night. And then over here it has like week 42, what month it is and the dates that it runs from and then you have this week's focus good things that happened you use a quote and you have personal list to do's and work to do's down here and then on this side you have a space of infinite possibility so it's just a blank area that you can use for whatever um, now on the passion planner website they have free printables where you can print out extra times if you need to extend the times in here they have habit trackers, they have all different things you can print out to add to this planner to make it so it works better for you. And at the end of every month they have a monthly reflection where it kind of asks, it asks you to go over your month and look back and see what worked and what didn't. So the questions they ask you are, what was the most memorable part of this past month? Describe it. What were the three biggest lessons you learned in the past month? Review your planner for the past month and assess your priorities. Are you happy with how you spent your time? If not, what steps can you take next month to adjust them? How are you different between this past month and the month before it? Who or what are you especially grateful for this past month? Name three things you can improve on this upcoming month. What are the concrete actions you can take to work towards these improvements? From 1 to 10, how do you feel overall about this past month? And on the bottom, they have an end of the month checklist. So it wants you to highlight your accomplishments, reform, and set checkpoints. So basically you're looking at how your passion roadmap and your goals, and if you've reached any of them, or any of the steps you've taken, and if you've completed them. Um, choose this month's game, game changer from your roadmap. Use the space in the bottom right of your monthly layout to break down the goals into smaller steps and assign deadlines for each step. 
So this allows you to really look at that goal and focus in on the different steps you need to take to achieve that goal and allows you to put it in in your weekly and your dailies to make daily sections to make sure that you are accomplishing what you need to get done. And then move the steps into their perspective, respective weekly layouts as checkpoints to track your progress. So again, it's making sure that you really are hyper-focused on those goals and what you need to do to accomplish them. So, I will show you. I'll show you mine. So I just got this, is the end of August. So I only have this week and the next week is September, or Saturday, which is September. So here's this month. I kind of just filled it in really quickly. I kind of just filled it in really quickly so that way I had knew what was kind of going on. Um, so here's the roadmap and as you can see in each of the boxes or the for the different steps I have little check boxes and I've checked them off as I've completed them or I felt I've completed them to the best of my ability. So then in my weekly I've added this habit tracker, which helps me to keep track of the goal and what the different steps are to the goal to make sure that I'm hitting them and hitting them well, to make sure that I'm not just only putting in half my effort. Um, and then you can see in my dailies, I've also added different things, like making sure I block out time for the gym and making sure I block out time for my to-do list as well, so that way I know how much time it is that I have to put towards my own goals and the things that I need to get done, like laundry or paying bills. So this is my monthly reflection. Um, you can see down here where it asked me to name three things I can improve on. I basically just drew a mind map. So it says improve in this red box. And then I did four boxes I felt of things that I could improve. Um, and then the red over here, it was a step or steps I could take to improve what was written in the blue boxes. I'm really loving my maps because they help me to see exactly what I need when I need it. So then this is my monthly. This is September. So you can see I filled it in with my bills. I can fill, I filled it in with important meetings or um, things I need to remember, like doctor's appointments. I, you know, filled in all of my to-dos for my personal and my school. Uh, I filled in the stuff up here for um, my focuses and people to see and things to do. I added in a quote here at the bottom because um, I didn't like the not to-do list. I felt it was, wasn't was as positive as I wanted it and changing my mindset or working on changing my mindset. I want to make sure that I'm not trying to word things in a negative way or I'm, I'm trying to reword things so they're done in a positive way instead of a negative way like instead of being like oh I we have so much debt I'm thinking about the wealth that I'm trying to create and then you can see here on the bottom I created my passion roadmap for the month so it sucks the wellness is the center and then off of that it has um, the things that I want to do and then off of that it has some steps or a step that I could take to really achieve it. So like it says so like it says wellness that's the the, um, the goal so it says wellness and then it says set up one thing with a friend and then it says you know once a week and then this one is, you know, take a bath and make sure that I do that once a week because I find it like really relaxing and refreshing and renewing. Um, and then this one says, oh, meditate once a day. And this is like podcasts once a week. Read once a day for 20 minutes. I also listen to audiobooks, so I count that as reading. Um, Spend time in nature once a week, and then focus on date night. You know, try to make that make sure that it's good, even if we are broke. Um, so you know, it's, it's that kind of it's it's done that way, so you can, like I said, really hyper focus. That's what this planner is made for. It's made so you can hyper focus on your needs um, and on your goals. 
So then in the back, they just have a bunch of blank paper and a bunch of, um, let's see. And then just a bunch of blank graph paper that you can write on to keep stuff, um, to keep stuff organized or if you need notes or something like that. And in the back they have this really nice um, pocket that you can store stuff in. Now, the only thing I have to say, so I'll do a quick pros and cons. So the pros about this planner is that you know, it's beautiful, it's well made. Um, I haven't had it for long, but everything that I've read says that it holds up really, really well. You know, being thrown in and out of backpacks or purses or carried around. Um, it's really well made. You can tell that somebody, that the creator put a lot of time and effort into thinking about a planner and it's a planner made for somebody who needs to really think about their goals or needs that time or that sort of um, help. Um, I loved the time, the time sections on each day. I think that's a really good way, especially for people who have a hard time visualizing how much time they actually have in a day um, for appointments and to-dos and all of that. I like the monthly. It's nice. It's big. It's spread out. So you have plenty of room to write. You have plenty of room to go over your notes. And I like how everything is sectioned into personal and work. So it's personal to-do, personal projects, personal work projects, whatever. It's sectioned out so you have those two separations. Um, and I also really like how much this takes into account you know, positive thinking and positive thoughts and um, reflection on your own actions and reflections on how you spend your time and reflections on whether or not you're doing what you need to to achieve what you need to um, or what you want to. And I really enjoy that and I enjoy the fact that they have put a lot of time into creating this and creating a product that is different from other things out there in the market. Um, I think it's really amazing. The con being that, um, you know, some people might feel confined by this layout, that there's just too much structure. Um, personally, I don't. I think the layout is good. I used a bullet journal for a long time and it got to the point where I was really stressed out just having to draw the layouts every week. Um, so some people might feel confined by the layout because of how structured it is. Also, sorry about that noise, there's a notification on my computer. Um, and the fan in the background is just wicked hot today, so there's just no way I'm able to turn that off. Um, and some people may not, may feel like the time doesn't go long enough. For me personally, it's great, because I try to ha make sure that everything I need to do in the day, or have scheduled in the day, is done by 6.30 at the latest. Because I want to spend time with my family, and spend time with my husband, and make sure that it, I don't have to worry about things past that time, um, unless you know it's like a marathon, a movie marathon, or something. Um, I wish that there were more pages in the back, blank pages in the back. Whether it was graph or blank, I prefer graph paper. But you know, I like the fact that I've got two choices that I can use. So if I wanted to sketch one day, maybe on the blank paper, I can. If I want to make a list in the graph paper, I can also do that. Um, but I just wish that there were more blank pages in the back. And the other thing, at least about the classic, a con, is that it is huge. This thing is, it's a big planner. It just, it is. I mean, you can, this is a piece of printer paper. This is a piece of printer paper and you can see that if I line it up on this edge and the bottom, it's basically the size of a piece of a printer paper. Um, so just, and that makes it heavy, it can make it kind of bulky, um, it's not something that you may necessarily want to carry around, and it doesn't really fit in a purse, it, it's not one of those you can throw in your purse, you have to have like a backpack, or something larger, you can't have one of those smaller purses, um, because it's just, it's not going to fit, um, and as a person who has a smaller purse, I, obviously it's not going to fit in my bag, but, uh, because my purse is probably half the size of, size of this piece of paper, um, so it is small. It carries my wallet, my keys, maybe a water bottle, and my phone. I mean, it's not meant to carry a lot, but I don't mind carrying this around in my hand. Um, like I said, it's beautifully made. 
it's well put together, it's well thought out, um, it holds up really well. The only real con I can see with it is the size and the weight. Um, I'm excited to try the Pro or the Compact to see if the sizes and the weight is any better on either of them. The weight isn't so much a problem for me, but if you have back issues or you have other bodily issues that may, that where weight is a factor that can cause different things, this may not be a good carry around planner for you unless you get a smaller size. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to go over that with you guys. I was really, I'm really excited and I'm really excited to see what changes occur. I've already seen change, I've already seen and felt better, and I've already feel like I'm hitting my goals and clearing them out and making sure that I'm really tackling it. And I feel like my life has improved and my mood has improved and I can really see the change that this planner is helping me to achieve. Um, so I'll put the link below if you guys want to go buy one. Um, they also do, they have free printables of a week that you guys can get and print out. So if you want to try that before you buy one, you know, go for it. Um, they do, they have a really awesome give one, get one policy where if you buy one, they give one to somebody in need or school in need or something like that. Um, so definitely check them out. Anyway, I hope you like, like this video. Please subscribe and comment below. Hope to see you guys soon. Bye!